How long can you survive without clothes or armor in the glowing sea? Today we'll be answering this question with three different Fallout 4 characters at level 1, level 46, and level 68. So let's get down to our undies and take a leisurely swim through the glowing sea. If Virgil found a way to survive there, you'll have to do the same. If you're going to follow him. Oh, I'm going in naked. Fingers crossed I get superpowers. I know you're joking, but as a doctor, I feel obligated to remind you that unprotected radioactive exposure will only kill you. What's up, everyone? Big Dan here. I have a bunch of different Fallout and RPG videos on my channel, so if you're interested in seeing more, hit that subscribe button. Without further ado, let's dive right in. If you think vault Tech runs some heinous experiments, just wait until you see what we do on this YouTube channel. Today, we're going into the glowing sea in our birthday suit, starting with our level 1 character, King Jag. Coming straight out of the vault, we made our way south, bypassing as many locations and enemies as possible. The trickiest part about this is not picking up XP so that we can still be at level 1 by the time we reach the glowing sea. I stuck to the western side of the map, and there weren't too many enemies that spotted me along the way, except for some raiders and a deathclaw. But they couldn't catch King Jag. He may be over 400 pounds, but he's fast as fuck, boy. So here we are at the starting line. I popped a couple stims and rat away to get me back to full health. But we're not using any rad X, any armor, and obviously no anti-rad perks since we're still at level 1. Our radiation meter is steadily taking over the HP bar, but not as fast as I expected, and after a full minute, King Jag had only lost about a third of his health. We soon passed the Pentecostal church, and a little more than half our health was gone by the time we reached the vertebrate wreckage at a minute 30 seconds. I was concerned that I might get killed by a rad scorpion or a deathclaw by now, but I encountered basically no enemies along this route. By the time we reached Skylane's Flight 1665, King Jag was in pretty bad shape, and I don't think he's got much left in the tank. I'm not sure if he died of radiation or the rad scorpion that popped up right before he ragdolled. But either way, we only managed to survive for 2 minutes and 43 seconds before kicking the bucket. Will our higher level characters fare any better during this experiment? It's time to meet our next character, Jack. I tried to style her after Jack from Mass Effect 2, but the results were... Eh... How did I do? <laughs> Fuck your feelings. I just want her dead. Ugh, just go away. Jack is at level 46, so surely she can hold out longer than our level 1 character, right? She has 347 HP, and King Jag only had 95. Well, this is where I learned that radiation damage in Fallout 4 is actually percentage-based. When you take 10 rads of damage, you lose 1% of your health bar. So a level 40 character loses more hit points per second than a level 1 character. I guess nuclear fallout really is a great equalizer. So our friend Jack actually ended up dying in the exact same amount of time as King Jag, 2 minutes and 43 seconds. And unsurprisingly, our level 68 character ended up dying even faster because he was also unfortunate enough to have a radiation storm hit the glowing sea right when he was taking a stroll. He only lasted 2 minutes and 33 seconds before giving up the ghost. Still, this is longer than I imagined before I ran the experiment. If you're exploring the glowing sea while naked, you can expect to survive for about 2.5 to 3 minutes before kicking the bucket. And that's if you don't get caught by a deathclaw or a rad scorpion first. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more Fallout and RPG videos. 
Until next time, this has been Big Dan. I should go.